right, it's Adam from Edge. I'm here with Charlie Kindle. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm doing great. All right, tell me what you do. I'm general manager for Windows Home Server, um, so I kind of run the show. Okay, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk to you about Home Server, specifically because I think, you know, for myself as an IT pro, I looked at it and said it's a toy server. I'm not interested. But uh, then I got actually to take a look at a product and see a demo, and you guys are doing some pretty cool stuff. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what kind of the, the key scenarios are that you're, you're targeting the home server for? Yeah, you know, I could spend a bunch of time talking about it from the pure consumer perspective because we definitely have built a product to go after, um, you know, n normal consumers who aren't geeks and, mm -hmm. and aren't IT pros in their real job um, or even want to be IT pros at home. Uh, we've done it, and I can talk about it a lot from that perspective, but I think for this audience it would be good to talk about it from the perspective of, of the IT pro and the more technical user because we've mm -hmm. also very much built the product um, so that people who are familiar with Microsoft technologies and server technologies will love this product because it, it, it is um, something that, that they're passionate about already. Sure, okay. Um, so uh, the, we think about, I'll just reiterate that a little bit more, we, we think about who we built the product for along two lines. We define personas which are uh, arch archetypes for users. And we have two personas we built the product for. One, the name is Jeff. And Jeff is um, uh, the, the typical consumer, not a geek, uh, uh, just wants things to work, but has multiple PCs at home, has a home network. Um, okay. And at the end of the day, like it or not, Jeff is who everyone in the family goes to when stuff goes wrong. Okay. Right? And that's, that's our primary target of the product. The other persona is someone we call Oliver. And Oliver generally ha is a Jeff as well, but really likes technology. And, and, and we found, and, and reinforce it, Olivers are generally IT pros in some sense of the form. Uh, they, at work, they do something related okay. to computers. Okay. So uh, from an Oliver's perspective, um, uh, you get everything you get with Jeff, which is automatic backup of all the PCs in your house. It just automatically backs up all of your PCs. Um, you get the ability to have you know, very easy to use centralized storage that allows you to store everything and drives you towards a model of, of keeping everything organized and so you don't have to wonder where, which PC the photos are on. You know they're in one place. Okay. And along with that centralized storage, you get robustness and ability for to be protected against drive failures through redundancy. Um, and then the, uh, the other part of the centralized storage is uh, uh, the fact that it grows with you. And we have this technology that allows you to just add hard drives to your home server pretty much infinitely and of any shape or form and we'll show some I'll show you some stuff here in a second with, with uh, some okay. hardware I have here cool. to illustrate that um, and then we have remote access which allows you to reach into the home when you're not at home and you can either access the files you have at home or your applications that are on your desktop and laptop PCs at home remotely okay all of that in a, in a, in a package that is a integrated hardware software deal okay so, for, you know, from an IT pro perspective, you mentioned remote access. So this is really acting yeah. as a, like a TS gateway or, or a remote desktop gateway to yes. the machines in my network. It, yeah. So, okay. so then I'll translate all that Jeff st stuff into the way you think about it. If you're if you're used to, you know, running a, um, a, a Windows NT or Windows 2000 or, or 2003, 2008 server infrastructure, uh -huh. you understand the idea of of all these technologies. At the end of the day, Windows Home Server is running. It is effectively a, a Windows Server 2003 box. Okay. Um, we did very little removing of functionality from the core Windows Server 2003 um, base. Okay. There are a couple limitations. For example, you can't make Windows Home Server a domain controller, um, and you also can't make it join a domain. Okay. Um, but. It will work in conjunction with a network that has a domain. So my home, my set, setup at home, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I think this will probably resonate with a lot of your, your, your audience. I have, right now, I think five servers at home. I have an Exchange server, an Exchange 2003. I have a SQL server. I have a web server. I have my home automation server. I have my Windows Home server. I've actually started to consolidate some of these, but this has gone okay. on for a long time. Okay. I had NT4 with Exchange 5.5 at one point. And the reason I did it is, one, it's kind of cool, but two, it was forced me to learn the products sure. and be a kind of a mid-market IT pro person at right. home. Right, okay. Um, and so and what I have at home is I have, a, I have, an active, I have a domain. Uh -huh. um, I don't actually join any of my, my home computers to it anymore. Um, I used to. Um, now they're all managed by my Windows Home Server. But my Windows Home Server sits next to my domain controller. It's on the same network. And because I have the right number of user accounts, just a couple, mm -hmm. um, the authentication just works naturally between the two of them. Okay. Um, 
So it works very well in parallel with yeah. that. I've noticed, it looks like Home Server does some kind of smart stuff with password sync, right? Yeah. It detects that a password isn't the yeah. same and prompts you to yeah. take one Yeah, Windows Networking has a, has a feature that, that where if the, the client and the server have the same username and password, even if they're in different security contexts, it will automatically m make authentication work. And we take advantage of that okay. with Windows Home Server. So all you have to do is make sure the usernames are the same and the passwords are the same on your domain as you're using on your Windows Home Server, and authentication just works. Kind of all happens transparently. Yeah. Okay. Now you mentioned backups and just, just automatic, I don't have to think about right. it, backups happen. Now I've noticed I'm backing up five machines at home and I'm not seeing gigabytes and gigabytes of, of storage being taken up by backups. What are you guys doing? You're doing some smart stuff with, with backup space. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm really proud of the technology and the, the guy, the guys and, and ladies on the team that built this are uh, uh, phenomenal engineers. It's just it, it's it's it is rocket science and it's very cool. So here's how it works: we we take all of the PCs that you have in the house mm -hmm. and all of their hard drives, and on a regular basis, effectively at night, we scan all of the clusters on those hard drives um, and calculate hash values for every cluster. And typically, a cluster is 4K in size, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we take the hashes of all those clusters and then we ask the server by transferring the hashes over the network whether or not the server already has those, those clusters or not. And um, if it does, we don't need to transfer any data. Um, we just we know the data is there and we can do some, some, store some metadata that basically says this, this PC had that cluster, this one also had it, or it existed at this point in time. Uh, what that results in is that we have this, this, this ability to take all of the disks and all of your home computers back up to the server in a super efficient way. Um, an example that I like to use is if you were to take uh, uh, three Windows Vista PCs mm -hmm. that had Office installed on them and you know a collection of family photos on all of those three PCs uh -huh. and they, you got to so, somewhere around 30 gigabytes of used disk space on each of those PCs. Right. So roughly a total of about 90 gigabytes of, of storage. And you were to back all three of those up to Windows Home Server. And you, then you looked at the amount of used space on the Windows Home Server, you'd find that you had somewhere around 40 gigabytes of used space. And you could recover any of those PCs uh, back to any point in time from that 40 okay. gigabytes. And that's the other cool thing you're doing. And you, 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 you provide a restore CD, right? I pop that in, I boot from that. Yeah. Pick pick the uh, the state and time I want to restore from. Exactly. So you take the um, uh, the uh, CD, put it in the in the in the desk in the desktop or laptop computer, boot it, and it says what day do you want to go back to? I'll tell you a story that, that where I actually use this. Okay. Um, right before Christmas, we were putting the Christmas tree up, uh -huh. and my wife came in. She was complaining that her Outlook uh, application wouldn't open voicemail files. Mm -hmm. And I saw it. I sat down at her PC and I looked at it for a little bit. I couldn't figure out why Outlook was failing to open these WAV files. I was opening other media files. And after about 10 minutes, I said, why am I wasting my time on this? I, this thing's backed up. So I took the, the Restore CD, put it on her machine, rebooted into it, selected. I said, hey, honey, when was the last time this was working? She said, sometime last week. So I picked the date last week, hit Restore, went back into the living room, finished putting up the Christmas tree lights, about 40 minutes later, I went and sat down at her PC. It had rebooted. And it, it was, I logged in to, on her account, opened Outlook, and it was fixed. So when we talk about protecting data, we use the term data protection in these uh -huh. scenarios. We actually also protect your time. And that's a key element of the product system. You know, even though we like playing with technology as geeks sometimes, um, we'd rather technology be useful. <laughs> and one yeah. of the ways it can yeah. be useful is it can reduce uh, the amount of time you spend yeah. on things. Okay. Do um, you want to give us a demo? You show us the concept? Yeah, I'll show. This is, uh, let's see here. Um, what I'm looking at here, this is uh, the home server console that represents uh, the home server I use here at work for storing all of my stuff. And I actually have a system where I replicate uh, my photos and music and videos from home to work. Okay. Um, and so I actually maybe have a copy of stuff in both places. Okay. Um, it, um, you could use something like Folder Share to do this, which is a Microsoft technology. We don't have anything built into the product that does it today. Okay. Um, the console, the, the, the product represents itself to the household in two ways. It represents itself to, to the Jeff or the Oliver of the household as the admin console, which is an infrequently used UI for configuring things. Okay. And then the other way it represents itself to the, to the rest of the household is just through standard Windows metadata.